Hello and welcome. Well, thankfully, there are very few experiences that we are likely to ever encounter in our lifetime that will be anything remotely similar to the COVID-19 lockdowns. You know, it really was a unique combination of a multitude of different stresses, all in one big melting pot. You know, whatever it was that was causing you the most grief in lockdown, I really hope that you're not experiencing the same burdens anymore and there is a light at the end of your tunnel. But one thing for sure is that when we are struggling, um, I guess, to see a way out of a situation and or we can't necessarily see a light at the end of the tunnel, one thing many of us do, and many, many parents have done, <laughs> is increase their alcohol consumption just to help them cope. Yep, us Aussies don't really need much of an excuse to crack open t a tinny or polish off a glass or two or more of wine, uh, let alone using the excuse of a, a global pandemic. But as we know, um, ongoing excessive alcohol consumption comes with a long list of associated health and social risks. Now, to talk to us about this today, we, we welcome our special guest, Dr. Erin Laylaw. Uh, Chief Executive Officer of the Alcohol and Drug Foundation. Now, Dr. Erin has over 20 years of leadership experience in the health sector and was most recently the CEO of the National Stroke Foundation and the Director of the World Stroke Organization. Now, with a Bachelor of Applied Science and a PhD, now she sits on a number of adv advisory communities in relation to public health, clinical improvements, and evidence based approaches to healthcare and delivery. It's wonderful to have you here today thank you so much for joining us how are you i'm good thank you for having me yeah this is this is great and um you know recently the, the alcohol and drug foundation developed um the have you been drinking alone community health initiative and um, we published an article um, on the day that it was launched but this has been the first opportunity that we've had uh, to get together and have a chat about it um, so there's lots to, to talk about but uh, first of all can you tell us a little bit about the initiative and really what prompted you to, to launch it in the first place so the Have You Been Drinking Alone um, and Community Health Initiative was, is a really important campaign and a really important message. And we um, developed this campaign off the back of information that we had gathered from parents across Australia. So we talked to parents in a survey of a thousand Australian parents, asking them what had happened with their alcohol use uh, during the COVID pandemic. And more than one in four of those parents told us that they had increased their use of alcohol. And about 20% of them were drinking in front of their children every day or every other day. Mm -hmm. um, understandably, um, a large proportion of them said that it was stress that was causing them to have that increased use of alcohol. Um, some of them said that that was related to homeschooling, uh, but certainly in such a stressful and um, tense time, uh, we, we appreciate that people are under a great level of stress and it is often um, a trigger for increasing your alcohol use. So we wanted to talk to parents about what they could do and how to be mindful about their use of alcohol during the pandemic and the impact that that might have not only on themselves because there are health issues associated with alcohol use, but also on their kids. Mm -hmm. So I guess the initiative was really just to draw attention to the issues of increased drinking amongst parents of school aged children and encourage parents really just to evaluate, I guess, and adjust their drinking behaviours in our new normal, would you say? Yeah, so it's getting parents to be mindful about what happens when they role model drinking behaviours for their children. And if you haven't seen the campaign, you can click onto our website at adf.org.au and have a look at the video, which is a whole lot of kids of whole lot of different ages participating in a Zoom meeting. So they're sitting down, um, talking to each other over Zoom, socialising over Zoom, and they're all having a drink, not with alcohol, um, but they're using the language that they've seen their parents use on um, around alcohol use. Uh, and it's just designed to get parents to understand the important role that they play as role models for their children um, and the risks that children see these sorts of behaviours and then start to carry those through to their, their lives. Mm -hmm. And we, we also published an article um, and the title of it was COVID-19 lockdown and increased alcohol consumption with all of that, those stats as well. So we'll have the, that, that link through uh, to, to your website and also to, to the article um, in, the, in the show notes. Um, but since then, um, and now that we are, I guess, a little bit 
further out of sort of lockdown and sort of easing back into our new normal. Have there been any other findings or developments since, since then um, or not at all? So um, we haven't done any further surveying with Australian parents, but we did um, seek to understand um, when we spoke to them what some of the triggers were. And it was interesting because the, the amount of change that we've seen in alcohol use during COVID varied depending on how old the parents were. So that younger age group, 18 to 34, were the ones most likely to report that they had increased their use of alcohol during COVID. The next generation... Um, Gen X was the next highest, and then baby boomers as parents were the least likely, but still likely to report an increase in alcohol consumption in about 16% of that group. Mm -hmm. uh, we also asked them what drove that. And in that millennial group, the 18 to 35, for them, a lot of the prompts for increased alcohol use wasn't necessarily stress, but it was increased exposure to alcohol-related memes so whilst we, uh, were during, we, we were in lockdown, I think everyone saw the memes that were circulating on social media that sought to inject humour into a tough situation with alcohol. But actually what it did was it, it um, prompted increased drinking um, amongst a particular age group. And then there was also um, the role of video socialising. So those Zoom meetings and having a drink over Zoom with your friends was um, another trigger for others to increase their alcohol use. So the campaign really was designed to, to take that information and get parents to, to stop, pause and think and be mindful about how they're using alcohol during such a stressful time. Mm -hmm. So um, it's mainly stress drinking, is it then? Um, and the primary reason for the increased alcohol consumption during, um, I guess, lockdown was, I guess, the heightened feelings of stress and anxiety, would you say? For a large proportion of the parents we spoke to, absolutely. And completely understandable. These times, as you've said, we haven't lived through such a time before. Um, we saw sudden uh, restrictions on the ability to be able to move around. We couldn't contact our family and friends the way we were used to. Lots of people weren't working anymore or were working from home. And social connectedness is such an important protective factor against alcohol um, that to lose that ability to socially connect with people was something we were really mindful of. So we've been encouraging people under such stressful conditions to, to, to find something other than alcohol to help them address the, that stress. Mm -hmm. Reach out for family and friends, be connected, be physically active, get out and have a walk, practice mindfulness, uh, and just think about what might be the other ways you can address stress um, rather than using alcohol as a coping mechanism. Mm. You know, to be honest with you, there's going to be lots of people watching and listening to this and sort of scratching their heads a little bit saying sort of, you know, are you kidding me? It was such a stressful time as, as you were just, you know, saying it was. And, and we've heard the, the phrase a, a million times unprecedented. And, and I, I guess it was a combination of homeschooling with, you know, um, maybe one or two parents um, working at home from home, um, juggling household um, and potentially other sort of stresses, financial stresses, relationship stresses, um, all of these things. So without sounding like we are, I guess, pouring um, a little bit of salt onto an open wound in what was really challenging time for parents i'd love to know you know what would you say to a parent that is thinking uh and watching this um at the moment that they 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 were just in a, a heightened stressful situation and the increased alcohol consumption um was due to that of course as a disclaimer um we're, we're not supporting or endorsing anything um of, of of the sort or alcohol any alcohol consumption in any way shape or form especially in and around the presence of children it's just about articulating the message so so people actually feel um, in, in this respect that we're not sort of necessarily just lecturing to them. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, I, that's been, lots of people have asked the question around um, does this shame parents who might have been drinking more during the pandemic? Um, surely this is a natural response to stress. And it's been really important for us to point out that this, this campaign is not about shaming people during what's been one of the most stressful times any of us will have lived through. It's absolutely not about that. It's about um, helping people um, understand what the consequences might be um, of that increased alcohol use. So mm -hmm. um, increased alcohol use has implications for the parent as well as the child. Uh, increasing your alcohol use can increase your risk of, of health issues like cancer um, it can, or stroke. 
it can also um, increase your risk of injury or accident on um, a particular occasion. So if you have more than four drinks in a, in a sitting, four standard drinks, that is, mm -hmm. um, that can increase your risk of accident or injury. And more than 10 drinks a week, according to the new draft guidelines, increases your risk of some of those health issues. So that's one of the consequences of alcohol. It is it is a substance that has become very much a part of Australian culture. It's a very much, we have very much um, a culture of drinking at home in Australia and the pandemic has really reinforced that culture. Mm -hmm. So this is not about trying to shame parents or make parents feel guilty. It's just about a, re a check in, um, stop, have a think about, is this really what, what your, your reaction to stress? Uh, and then to think about what that might mean for your kids. So we know, we know that um, children who have, are exposed to a lot of drinking in the home um, and parental use of alcohol, that the parental use of alcohol influences the child's use of alcohol. It can mean that children will start using alcohol at an earlier age, and it can also influence their attitudes to alcohol later in life. So we are um, wanting to support parents who want to take steps to perhaps change that. And some of the things that you can do is just as easily as parents can role model those unhealthy behaviours, they can role model those healthy behaviours. So it's limiting your use of alcohol to the 10 drinks a week and no more than four in one day. It's changing the language that you use around alcohol. So instead of saying things like, I need a drink or I deserve a drink, it's really using alcohol in a different way. Choosing some alcohol free days a week if you find you're drinking every day showing your kids that you don't need alcohol to be relaxed or as a re result of stress and that you're able to socialise without alcohol are all things that are really positive behaviours that parents can role model and that many parents are role modelling. So I think that's important to know too, that we're seeing lots of parents role modelling some great behaviours as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's going back to what you were just saying before, um, you know, a lot of households, I guess, um, have got drinking as part of their their daily lives and um, you know one glass of, of wine with dinner is in some you know in, in most households sort of quite sort of normal but um, like like anything um, there are obviously health effects um, um, for anything above that you know so um, with, with like one one particular drink um, sort of raises I guess um, the, what the what we call the high density um, level proteins and which is the the, the H um, D HDLs are they um, which is which is something that which I think more so than anything that a lot of people are doing but anything from two glasses onwards is actually bad for cholesterol and for our health but you know going back to also what you're saying before also that um, the long term effects on um, of what drinking has on children um and what it actually does to their emotional health as well of course they have the feeling um in households of, of neglect and, and not being seen and not being seen can also i guess invoke something called cptsd which is complex post-traumatic stress uh, disorder um which of, of course can sort of have an effect on children's uh, neuroplasticity um and those types of things and, and just depending on um how and how much the parents and how often the parents are drinking and what the effects are these these types of things also can i guess um have the children um sort of open themselves up to to i guess more abusive um uh, sort of uh, situations later on in life um have you had any experience or knowledge of that at all I think you're talking about really extreme cases there. Yes. Um, and really what we're talking about is just trying to change a culture around alcohol. Yes, yes. So this is about, um, I mean, and it's, there are many people who um, are using alcohol within what we would recommend as the guidelines, as you've said, that um, it is, they, they would drink occasionally and they don't drink a lot. Our concern at the moment is those parents who, for reasons we completely understand, are increasing their use. Um, yeah. And the fact that that can change the culture of alcohol for their kids. So um, the, 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 the change in behaviour and the positive behaviours that parents have an opportunity to role model are the things that we're wanting to talk to, uh, to encourage parents to, to think about. Um, and I don't think that the video that we've developed is something that does that in a way that is relatively engaging without using 
um, tactics that are terrifying um, or extreme examples of what might happen uh, with alcohol consumption. So I think the other thing to point out is that it was almost the perfect storm during the pandemic for um, triggers or levers that would increase alcohol use. We saw increased stress and anxiety, but the other thing that we saw was um, an increase in the promotion of alcohol online. So there was a study released um, earlier this month by the Foundation for Alcohol Research and Education that looked at the um, number of times that people were seeing advertising for alcohol. And there was one example where ad alcohol advertising was seen on Facebook every 35 seconds. Now we know, and our parents told us in the survey that it was seeing memes that increased and triggered their um, use of alcohol. But um, if you're under stress and anxiety, and then you've got this push and exposure um, to alcohol advertising, that will exacerbate those issues. So um, parents really didn't have a chance. Um, stress and anxiety and lots of memes coming around on their, on their social media feeds um, promoting alcohol, uh, which is a, um, is a driver of alcohol use. So uh, it's, this, this campaign is really about getting people to understand that alcohol use um, can increase during times of stress and anxiety. Uh, that there are other things that you can do. Alcohol as a coping mechanism can actually make stress and anxiety worse. Um, so find other ways of coping with it and think about um, how you can role model those healthier behaviours for your children are the things that we're really encouraging people to, to pick up. In your opinion, like why is drinking not an effective you know, coping mechanism um, during this, this COVID-19 era or, and or any other stressful time in someone's life then? Yeah, so alcohol actually can increase stress and anxiety. It can contribute to um, difficulty sleeping. Um, it um, causes someone to, to feel relaxed at one point, but um, then increases stress after that. So it is not an effective mechanism for coping with stress and anxiety. Um, and there are much better ways to cope. Uh, getting out, going for a walk, um, putting in a call to a friend, um, spending time playing with your kids. And if you do have difficulty with alcohol, if you find that it is challenging to be able to reduce the way that you are using alcohol, there are online services. Hello Sunday Morning is a great program that's online, got a really great network of people who are also trying to um, manage their, the way they use alcohol. There is an increase in the ability to access treatment online now um, during the time of COVID. So um, if you do need help, reach out to your health professional, reach out to others. Uh, don't try and fight it on your own. Sometimes having that conversation is a great first step to starting to see a change in behaviour. Mm. And the, uh, the purpose of the Alcohol and Drug Foundation is to prevent and minimise um, the harm caused by alcohol and other, um, and other drugs in, in Australia. So how would you, I guess, describe the associated alcohol-related harms um, that children um, otherwise can have exposure to? So um, really alcohol-related harm in children is around uh, their exposure to alcohol advertising. So we see quite a lot of advertising during sports, which is during children's viewing time. Um, if you watch a game of football, you will see um, alcohol advertised regularly throughout that, either uh, on-ground advertising on uh, players or via um, other platforms. Um, we know that children being exposed to um, drinking in the home or drinking around them is another risk factor. But the other thing we know is that if we want to um, get kids to be uh, protected, so build those protective factors around alcohol and drugs, there are a number of things that we do. And one of them is to encourage them to be active in team sport, and organised sport. Um, spend lots of time with their parents, have their parents know where they are um, when they're out and about uh, and be in, and have friendship groups that, that don't use alcohol and drugs. So there's, there's lots of things that we can do that, aren't, that don't talk about alcohol at all that will support children um, being protected from harms from alcohol and drugs. 
And one thing that you've highlighted right throughout this initiative is that exposure to regular or excessive drinking can influence children's attitudes and future behaviours around alcohol. Um, So could you tell us what impact uh, you think it it actually has on children if they witness their parents drinking alcohol? Really, it's about the normalising culture. So um, children watch their parents they learn from their parents so um, the way that alcohol plays a part in everyday life in a family um, creates a culture of alcohol for the the children in that family so that that's really what it's all about it's about an alcohol the culture around alcohol within a family um, and the way that we can influence that by role modeling the behaviors that i've spoken about so um, keeping your um, use of alcohol within the draft recommended guidelines, so 10 drinks a week and no more than four standard drinks in, in one sitting. Um, if you're drinking every day, finding a couple of alcohol-free days, changing the way you describe your use of alcohol and showing your kids that you don't need alcohol to have fun, showing your kids that yes. um, you don't need to use alcohol to cope with stress and anxiety. Yeah. And that's one thing the survey findings really mentioned, um, as you said earlier at the start of the chat, that one in five Australian parents, which is 20%, um, have been drinking every day or every other day in front of their children. Um, And no doubt this would have been challenging for some children to witness their parents change and go from an occasional alcoholic beverage at the end of a long day of work into a daily ritual um, after, say, a day of, of, you know, homeschooling or what have you. So, you know, in your opinion, would you say it's, you know, it's really critically important that children do not learn to view alcohol as a coping mechanism? Or do you think that alcohol, um, or, and or obviously to think that alcohol is um, a healthy lifestyle choice? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I would strongly urge um, everyone to, to do what we can to avoid um, kids thinking that alcohol is um, a good way of responding to stress um, and to understand the longer term implications of the way that they use alcohol. Absolutely agree. Yeah. And I guess the last thing we really want is for children to associate home um, with drinking and being un- uncomfortable in the, you know, the environment that they are sort of relaxed and is their sort of <laughs> their place in the world where, where they, are, they should sort of feel safe. So I guess the problem is that drinking at home can be something that people can get used to. Um, and um, I'd love to know what your thoughts are with that. Just, I guess, sort of bring it into our um, sort of day-to-day day-to-day lives, I guess. Yeah, so um, doing what we can to make sure that um, children in the home um, are um, seeing their parents using alcohol in a way that minimises the risk of harm. Um, and again, it's the, those draft guidelines. So no more than 10 drinks a week and no more than four in one, one sitting and trying to have a few alcohol-free days um, a week if you find that you're drinking every day. And in your experience, um, have you seen any of these behaviour patterns um, have a long-term effect on children as they go into adulthood at all? Yeah, definitely. So um, as I've said, um, the way that alcohol is used in the home can mean that children will start using alcohol earlier uh, at a younger age and also that it changes their views and approach to alcohol when they're in adulthood. You know, and what if parents now find that they, they've been drinking um, sort of a little bit more than normal and are sort of struggling to sort of to cut back um, to, to, I guess, pre-COVID levels. <laughs> yeah, so for those people who are struggling to cut back to pre-COVID levels, um, some of the things we'd be encouraging them to do is to try that alcohol-free day every now and then, substitute a non-alcoholic drink for your alcoholic drink, uh, push the first drink to later in the day and remember that there is help there. If you need help, you don't have to sort of do this on your own. Our website, adf.org.au, has lots of tips for parents. It has lots of links to places where you can find more information or more help. Um, Hello Sunday Morning and other programs are great places for people to to check into to see how others are coping, how others are managing, and to, to learn from others. 
And I guess part of what some what we're living through at the moment is we're really we're not out of the woods yet, and many of the stresses that we were experiencing in lockdown haven't just simply disappeared, um, and really could still be part of you know our everyday lives. That being job losses, financial pressures. Um, problems with businesses, uh, bills, you know, even just, just, for example, the restriction on children's hobbies and activities that they're missing yeah. um, and all those types of things as well. So from, from that perspective, um, you know, I'd love to know what do you think and do you think really that we have a significant public health issue on our hands at the moment with more people using alcohol to, to sort of to self-medicate, given that what, what the world's just going through at the moment? Yeah, well, we, as our, as our um, data shows us, uh, more than one in four parents is drinking more than they were before COVID. Um, we would like to support and encourage them to revert to pre-COVID and um, recommended drinking levels. Um, stresses will start to lift, but I think we're in for a long haul. So just reinforcing those messages of trying to find other ways of coping with any stress that you may have in your world at the moment. Um, connect with your family and friends, reach out for help if you need it. Um, and remember that you don't have to do it alone. Yeah. And, you know, from a positive perspective, I guess once the COVID-19 um, era is gone, definitely not forgotten. <laughs> I don't think we're ever going to forget <laughs> living through this. Um, mm. But, you know, certainly um, there's going to be times in our lives when we're going to have other you know, unfortunate and stressful situations in yeah. our life, um, being it um, loved ones being sick or, you know, losing loved ones, what have you. So there's always going to be other things in our lives um, after we sit it, we get through this. So, you know, what advice do you have that could, um, I guess, sit with someone in uh, like, like in their, in their long-term memory that would hopefully that they would remember that one day should they find themselves in a, in a really stressful situation again in the future that will help. Um, I guess not to sort of to start. Um, I guess on a, on a spiral of 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 using alcohol as a coping mechanism for stressful times. Yeah. So practice those things that help you deal with stress in a healthy way: being physically active, having a walk, practicing mindfulness, um, being socially connected to your family and friends, picking up a hobby. Lots of us did jigsaw puzzles during the the pandemic. Um, so just finding other things that will help you manage that stress and reach out for help if you need it. Yeah. This has been a great chat. Um, if you, I guess, to um, summarise, I guess, all your, your key messages um, that you would like any viewer or um, anyone sort of listening in, what would, you, what would you say they are? We've been living through an incredible stressful time. It's been tough. Um, it's been hard for everybody and everyone it's been different for. Um, but the way that we cope with that stress can have implications for our own health and the health of our children. So we're just asking people to be mindful about what you're doing with alcohol during the pandemic and during isolation and know that there are ways that we can support you and others can support um, parents to role model those healthy behaviours for their children around alcohol use. Thank you for those messages. Um, and if any parents um, would like to have some support or find some more information, whereabouts can they find you or the, the foundation? So if they look on um, our website, adf.org.au. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time today and uh, all the best. Take care. Thank you. Okay, bye.